Now, let me ask fellow citizens, if we continued, which is what one country, neighboring country, is doing, just to arrest people we suspect that they've stolen something, they stole something, a neighboring country, we sent a team to establish, how is it that they forced recoveries quickly? They briefed our team that we had struggled to recover because people were not cooperating. Thieves are difficult. And I agreed with that view, that thieves are difficult. That's why they steal from people. That's why they commit crimes. So we said, how did you do it? They said, we went to Parliament and changed the law, and any suspect, reasonable suspect, we believed stole something from the people, we locked them up, and locked them up for 90 days, and left them in prisons for 90 days. And we told them, when you are willing to talk to bring the assets, we are here outside. Tell the prison warders that you are ready to talk, and we will talk to you. And since then, that country has recovered about $13 billion of public money. Is that the route we want to go? We should debate that. To accelerate, to arrest any suspect without due process of the law, lock them up for maybe six months. And they will talk. We know that they will talk. If we are to do that, we have to go to Parliament and change those laws. It is you, the citizens, that must make those decisions. But we'll probably be faced with a new problem where we'll be tramping on the human rights of citizens. So our job is to find a middle ground, to fight corruption, to recover assets, which we need most, citizens need most, but still respect human rights. That's a core. That's a core which I believe will be respected in a couple of years from now. Should we take people to prison without trial? Should we? Should we get another team like HH locked up for 127 days without being taken to court? When the law says anyone arrested for suspicion of crime must be taken to court within 48 hours. Should we amend that law and take it to six months? The choice is ours. So for now, this leadership will take those arrested to court within 48 hours. And if their matter is bondable, they should get bond. Including given Lubinda, who got bond, but he never gave me bond when he was just this minister. But we're, we're, we're allowing the law to, for him to get bond. He should say, say thank you to us. That we're respecting the rule of law. Should we arrest people based on social media stories? That's a question. Does the frustration citizens are saying this country, this government is not fighting corruption because a social media story is run and immediately this government must arrest those who are mentioned, who are named in the social media story? Pick them up throw them in for 127 days. It will be you, the same citizens, who will complain. Because even you will be named very soon by somebody who doesn't like you and post something on social media that you stole something and will arrest you. And you'll be in for 127 days. Some of you have no spine. You will break down after 10 days. You must say thank you to this government. This government had the right to be vindictive. This president could have been all out arresting people because I was the most discriminated citizen in this country in the last 10 years. The most detained, 
the most abused. I slept on the floor for 127 days without a blanket. I was put in a cell with fecal matter on the floor and all the walls. In Nililai, no toilet, no ventilation, no lighting for eight days. Now, now that you have elected us to save you in the presidency, if I had no different spine, I could have rounded up all of those people, illegal of course, and threw them in prison. If I did that, I am no different from those who threw me into prison. I want to argue today that I'm different from those people. I occupy a higher moral ground than those people. But Zambians, you are saying, no, lock them up the way they locked you up. No, I'm saying no. The law must apply. We shouldn't arrest people based on social media stories. We should investigate. We shouldn't arrest people based on false words. We shouldn't. That's an era of the past. Social media is good, but it's also being abused. Should we believe what Nakachinda said that HH court judges at his house and told them to do or to manage a matter, a certain matter in a certain way. Should we believe and run that on social media that HH is abusing judges? I never called any judges to my house. That was a lie. So why should we then promote lies in our country? I never called any judges to my house. Never. But Nakachinda said he had evidence, he had seen in his binoculars that I had called judges. <laughs> Under the rule of law, Nakachinda paid, must pay the price because he lied to the nation, isn't it? When Nakachinda is arrested, some of you will say, no, 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 HH is abusing his presidential powers. No, it's a laws. The laws apply for the abused, the laws apply to the abuser. What do I mean? If you are arrested for criminality, the crime will be charged, will be given to you. If your matter is bailable, you should get bail. But you should have been charged. You were charged. That's the point I'm making. But the message I'm giving to the people of Zambia, let us not feed on falsehoods because we will lose what we intend to do for this country. When he got arrested for lying that or contempt of court, he went and said, no, that was a political statement. What is the meaning of that? What does that mean? You can go out and lie and injure citizens, then you say, no, that was a political statement. Two days ago, he said, and I hardly refer to individual names myself. You have seen I don't respond to criticism. That's who I am. I don't. Publicly. I will respond by acting on the criticism, by correcting what people are saying, if what they're saying is true. Two days ago, he says, three days ago, how foolish can the people of Wengwa bring their foolishness to state house? How foolish can Tongas and Zambians allow a Tonga to bring the Tonga stupidity to state house? Now, this country is not about Tongas, it's not about Bembas, it's not about Nyanjas, Ngonis, Chevas, it's not about Lozis, Lubales, it's about the citizens of Zambia. That's what it is about. I'm Zambian first. 
Zambian born where? In Monze. Did I choose? No. Ask my mother. You saw her on, on film a few days ago. Ask her. Why did she give birth, give birth to this child in Monze? Ask her, not me. But this is what we're beginning to make our country to be, to focus on pettiness. And you raise it and give it momentum on social media. This is not what this government wants to do. This government should take care of all citizens of this country, irrespective of where they were born, how they twist their tongues, in terms of language, that's a gift from God. We should cherish it. You know, I saw somebody posting and saying, mind you, I read what you post. Eh? I want the nation to know that I read what is being posted. And someone posted and said, yeah, yeah, we should never elect another Tonga, based on Nakachinda's statement. Doesn't the law provide against discrimination on, a, on ethnic grounds? It does. Another opposition leader a few days ago was addressing a Kasmo rally somewhere and said HH doesn't greet Zambians. He wears a mask when he faces Zambians <laughs> and gloves. But when he sees white people, he removes his gloves and removes his face mask. Face mask. Face mask is a health issue. Now, is that the checks and balances we're talking about? Talking about racism? Is that the country you want to build? Absolutely not. So my advice to citizens, don't drag your time, expensive time, valuable time, to petting the affairs of the country. Our approach to the fight against corruption is that there is no compromise on the fight against corruption. No compromise. Past, present, future corruption. No one should stand in the way of the fight against corruption. No one. No insinuation that there's an ethnic issue in the fight against corruption will sway this government. No minister, vice president, president, cabinet office should stand in the way of the fight against corruption. We are aware that the stock of many people in public office interacted with corruption firsthand. We are aware of that as they conducted their office duties. Some were used in the corruption process. My advice to you is that we have kept you in office because you are a citizen, because we want equity and fairness. But we are not oblivious to the fact that you may have been involved in corruption. And your best conduct is to walk away from protecting corruption. If you don't walk away, you will exit anyway. And when you exit, don't complain. No one in State House will protect the corrupt, the clique of the corrupt, who believe now they have a new lease of life because we are following the rule of law, because we are giving them police bond. The system is giving them police bond. That's a mistaken understanding. No one should stand in the way of corruption. I mean Auditor General, I mean Anti-Corruption Commission, I mean Drug Enforcement Commission, I mean DPP, I mean that, I mean that, we mean that no one should protect the corrupt. You do that, you're on your own. It's a futile exercise to do that. You do that, you are on your own. You are at cabinet office, you are shielding the corrupt, you are on your own. You are at this ACC, you are shielding corruption. When we pick it up, you are on your own. 
You are in status, you are on your own. You are a minister, you are shielding people you know were corrupt. You are asked to swap people around. You don't want to swap people, you are on your own. You are DPP, you are on your own. No one is above the law. No one is above the law. Nobody. I, hate, I guess that point is clear. 